hi there beautiful thrivers I'm back with another video today we're gonna be doing the decorating up of my budget books for the month of July I know I'm a little late but we're gonna get it done while we're at it we're gonna be doing a Q&A so thank you guys for being here click that subscribe button like the video and let's go Hi everyone, I hope you guys have been doing good. I know it's been a week, at least a week since I have posted anything. Um, I miss you. I miss you guys. I have read all the comments, have not responded to a single one. I apologize. Been kind of busy, but um, yeah, I've read them all. I appreciate everyone that took the time to do that. In addition to all of that on the videos, I did put a community post asking for your questions so that I would have some questions to answer for this video. So thank you to everyone who did put your questions there. I plan to answer those as I decorate up this book. And I, of course, have my hubby right over there. He is also going to be joining in on that portion of this video so that he can help answer questions as well, since it's mostly about him. So with that being said, I'm going to skip the prompt a card. We're not going to do that this time because this video is going to be long enough, but I'm going to start with stickers. Let's go ahead and open up Casey Lee's stickers for the month of July. And here they are, of course, not opened at all yet. So it's been so long since I ordered these. It's probably going to be a little bit of a surprise for me just as much as it is for maybe you if you've not seen her stickers for this month. So here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and grab out the receipt so that we don't show any personal information. And let's check it out. So we have some freebies here that she's given. How cute. I love them. we got some groceries. We've got um, some days off vacation. Very nice. And then she also gave some stickers to match the theme of this month, which is definitely red, white, and blue because, you know, Independence Day for us United Statesers. Um... But yeah, I got the normal things, transaction log, the sinking funds, um, July budget, the paychecks, one, two, and three. We have our weekly check-ins that I use for my WTF Wednesday videos, the July um, calendar overview that looks so cute in person. This looks so very cute. Um, got some, like add-on stickers to go with the calendars. Um, oh, those are cute too. And then just all these little extras that I use for the various different ways that I use them. You'll see how I use them in this video, of course. Then I use the Daily Duo, the A5 Daily Duo, um, to set up my WTF Wednesday. You'll see how I do that. I do cut them to match what I need, so you'll see what I do in this video as we go. So these are all Casey Lee stickers. You can find her on Etsy. She did give you guys a code if you want um, to purchase any stickers from her. She has an entire shop on there and it's Thriving 15. You can get 15% off of any of your orders. It's pretty awesome that she does that for you guys. I'm not sponsored, but since I do order from her every single month, she is kind enough to give that to you guys. So there you go. I also use my own stickers that I've printed right here. This is just to help me with the actual um, budget book to prepare for the paychecks. So you'll see me cut these and use these. I had to print a few extra of these, so I need to cut some of these as well. So we'll start there with cutting stickers. So I'm gonna cut these for sure. And the other things that I cut are, let's see, um, I do cut one weekly check-in because I use the category and spent. And then I use, 
let's see. I cut these and those and all of these for sure. I think that's everything I cut, but if I need to pull anything else, I'll definitely show you or tell you guys what I'm doing. So, but I'm pretty sure that's it. All right, so I'm gonna put these off to the side since we're not gonna cut those just yet. Right there. And then also I use some other stickers that I've gotten from either Casey Lee or just various other places, but like this, this is Casey's. Um, and then these I got from Planner Kate, also Casey, mostly from Casey. So you'll see me pull those out occasionally and use those. And then I also have other stickers that I have made. Um, like these that you'll see me use. I made all of those. They were supposed to match my book, but my printer did not print the same color that I made it. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I'm going to get started with cutting these really quick. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to do a quick, maybe not so quick, recap of the past six weeks of our life. You guys I know want an update on everything that's been going on. Um, if you've kept up with my channel, um, you know the things that we've been going through. So I need to give you guys an update on that. And then on top of that, there might be some new subscribers that may not know what's going on. So this is for you just as much so that you can kind of be up to date on what's happening in our life. So I'm just going to start with cutting these and explaining the past six weeks. All right, so when I make my stickers, I don't have a regular Cricut. I have a Cricut Joy, and it doesn't do the print and then cut option. So I print these on sticker paper, and I just hand cut them. So that's what we're going to be doing, just so I have this ready to go, and the rest of this is seamless for me. So that's why you're going to be seeing me cut stickers which is fine. It's getting the job done. And I accidentally messed this one up, so I'm going to toss this one. I do have an extra one of these in my sticker book. So let's start with the recap as I cut these. Um, it all started on May 17th, I believe. May 17th. Um, one night I was just chatting with the hubby, hanging out with him, um, looking him over for some reason. That's just something I do sometimes. I, um, I just like, I don't know. <laughs> I pick over his body. I don't know. And he has a scar on his leg that he's had for many, many years, like maybe a decade. And I was looking at it and to me it looked different. It looked different from the last time I had looked at it. So, it had changed in my eyes it had changed visibly and it made me curious and so I told him I think you need to maybe go have that checked out maybe give it a look go to the dermatologist because I just found I had just taken my um, two children to the dermatologist for some warts that they had on them and I had just found them they're pretty local and I was like you know you should, you know, hop over there and just have them look at it. If it's nothing, it's nothing. Um, if it's something, then it needed to be found. So he immediately made the appointment and went the very next day on the 18th of May. And um, originally he got checked over and they didn't think that it was anything. Um, they actually called it a trauma tattoo because it is a scar, an old scar that he had, and um, didn't think anything of it, but because um, I had noticed some changes in it, they just wanted to be sure, so they did take a biopsy of it, they scraped it off, and sent it for lab work, so that, you know, just to double check that it isn't anything more than what they were thinking it was, which I'm glad that they did that, because it did come back, cancerous and he had 
basically a melanoma. Um, from what they could tell from the, the specs or the labs or whatever, it looked to be pretty early in its stages. So they were pretty confident that it's something that could be handled with just some surgery, um, you know, because it was caught so early. And the thing with melanoma is if you catch it early enough, it is just an easy fix. You get it cut off and you get to move on with your life. If you catch it too late, it is almost exclusively fatal or disastrous. And so that was a little nerve wracking to read about because, you know, when you don't have something going on in your family, you don't necessarily research about it. So doing the research on it, it was a little scary, but I did have some confidence in what they had said about it already looking like it's early stages. So it gave us a little bit of, okay, well maybe it's not that bad, you know. So they did um, recommend us to go to an oncologist in the city. And so we did make that appointment and went to that oncology appointment, met the doctor that would be doing the surgery. So for some perspective, he had that appointment on May 18th and on June 1st, they called back with those results, letting us know that he indeed did have cancer. So, um, we made that appointment and we were fit in on, on June 20th. So on June 20th, that was like, you know, 19 days after we found out that he had cancer, not really a lot of time to digest that information, but you know, this is not something that we wanted to just sit on. Cause like I said, the earlier you catch it, the better chance of getting rid of it easily. So, um, we got that appointment and we were told that it was an aggressive form because they did more testing on it just to see. Um, what we were looking at and so we knew that it was an aggressive form of cancer we didn't want to waste any time and neither did they so um, June 20th oncology appointment we went to that and got all the information we needed to know um, and they scheduled the surgery and the surgery was literally scheduled eight days later it was so fast. We barely had time to even think or prepare or anything, but it, it was enough time to do the things for sure. But you know, eight days from the time we saw that doctor to the time we were going into surgery. So on the 28th, he had his surgery. That was this, not this past Wednesday, but the Wednesday before he was in surgery for quite a lot longer than than they originally told me. They told us that it would be 45 minutes and it ended up being uh, two plus hours he was in surgery. Um, I waited for him for news, all of that, keeping all the family updated as I waited. And then finally the doctor came and called me back to a room and he told me that um, the surgery went well, but it was a lot more intensive than they originally were planning because um, they had to do a skin graft. So he ended up having um, two full incisions, one on the leg where the cancer was, the other in his groin area where they removed a lymph node because they wanted to make sure that he didn't have the cancer spread through the lymph nodes. So they did take that and then he decided while he was there that instead of making a third incision to take a skin graft from one place to another because on the leg, especially where it's located, that skin cannot stretch very well. So when they took out the chunk, they couldn't, you know, pull it back together. So they needed to do a skin graft. So instead of making a third incision, they went ahead and just cut that lymph node area a little bit larger and took skin there and then placed it on the leg. So he had a skin graft, which means the recovery 
is to be expected a little bit more more <laughs> if that makes sense so he did that and I took him home much a little bit later he had to go through the whole you know um, recovery room type thing and then I took him home and I've been taking care of him ever since and it has not been it's not been that easy to be honest for him for me it's been fine but for him it's not been because of the fact that um, he can't shower he can't walk on it very much the doctor said very very limited we don't want to mess up a skin graft and it can't get wet so I followed those rules exactly I told him I even was smart and proactive and voice recorded the meeting with the doctor after he got back from surgery so that you know I didn't misunderstand directions or anything and so that you know my hubby when he was you know out of anesthesia that he could hear what the doctor had to say firsthand so I did that and we did listen to it I think we listened to it twice <laughs> on the way home so that he understood what to expect um and as far as recovery goes so yeah I I have been um taking care of him and giving him sponge baths and um feeding him. I swear it's like having a child again. And for me, because I love children, it just, I loved it. <laughs> I have been loving it. I'm not, I'm still not done. We're still in that mode, um, of me taking care of him because my kids are older and I haven't had any children needing me. Um, so it just feels good to be needed in a way for him, not so much. And I'll let him explain that a little bit later. But yeah, for him, he's like, he, the struggle was real. He wasn't, um, he just, you know, he's, he's an independent guy. He is, it, it's hard to depend on someone for everything. So, and I totally get it. But at the same time, I just wanted him to know he's not putting me out at all. I am rather enjoying it. So <laughs> It's been working out though, and then they did the biopsy on his, um, let's see, half of 16 and a half is eight and two and a half. So, all right, so I needed those measurements. But anyway, back to the story. Um, we're waiting to hear on the biopsy of his lymph node to see if it spread. Now, they did tell us that there was a good prognosis. Um, Regarding that, because we had caught it so early that 90 to 95% chance that it had not spread to the lymph nodes. Um, but that does mean there's an unlucky 5 to 10% of people where it has spread. So he wasn't going to say it's not until, you know, test had come back. So we expected, because that's what the doctor said, that it could be that he has the results by July 10th, which hasn't come yet. I don't know when I'll post this video, but it hasn't come yet at this point. It is, it's July 8th. So his appointment is in two days. And um, he was basically saying that if the results hadn't come back by July 10th, then, you know, they'll call us. But hopefully it would have been back by then, um, that appointment. However, two days after surgery so his surgery was on a Wednesday um, and by Friday we got a call from the doctor letting us know that they already had the results from that biopsy on his lymph node and it was clear so he is officially cancer free they got everything that they needed to get in his leg and there was no spread um, beyond that point to his lymph nodes, which would be the very first place it would go. So that's great news. It is done. He is cancer free. That was six weeks of a roller coaster from finding out that he has cancer to that moment. It just 
It's like, wow, did this really even happen? <laughs> it went by so fast. So that's, um, that's pretty much it. That's a recap on the past six weeks. We've just been in recovery mode now and he's been recovering well, like, um, doing all the things that he's supposed to be doing or supposed to not be doing. And yeah, we're just doing the things. Um, it'll be nice to have him back on his feet. So far he's not, we've got him a scooter, a knee scooter so that he can get to the bathroom and he can have a little bit of independence without putting any weight or too much weight on that leg. Um, but for the most part, I'm still taking care of him, making his meals, helping him with the sponge bathing and all of that. I'm not exactly sure how long it's going to be until he can have a full on shower. Um, it's just, I guess something about skin grafts. You just can't get them wet. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not a doctor, but he was very, very adamant to not get it wet. Like very adamant. So, um, yeah, so we've just definitely been making sure that that has not happened. And, and other than that, like we haven't had to take care of it. We haven't had to change bandages or anything. In fact, he didn't want us touching anything at all. The, um, groin incision was like with stitches and a liquid bandaid. So it's doing its own thing. Um, he's like, just forget about it, leave it alone, don't even think about it or touch it. And then the leg graft at itself has um, something staped, stapled over top of it. I'm sure if anybody watching has any experience with skin grafts, you know what I'm talking about. But it's some kind of, you know packing or something that's stapled to his leg on top of it and completely wrapped and we don't touch that either so there's been no like care wound care or maintenance on that which has been actually kind of nice because there's already so much that I'm having to do for him or help him do that that's like one less thing to have to deal with um, but I'm not sure when we go to his appointment in a couple of days, if that's going to change because they will be removing that packing and the staples and whatnot. And so maybe after that, we will probably have to do some wound care, um, just to keep it covered and, you know, safe. I'm not really sure. So I of course will update you guys on anything that we learn from that appointment. But all in all, he's doing really good. So um, I did ask you guys a lot of questions, or not a lot. I asked you if you had any questions in regards to that or anything in general. And you guys came through. You guys came through. Y'all gave me quite a bit of questions to answer, which I totally appreciate. It's better than not getting any questions at all and then feeling like nobody cares. <laughs> so thank you guys for showing some interest there um, and sending those questions. So I'll, I actually look forward to answering those with the hubby. Um, yeah, and I'll do that very shortly. So I'll probably time lapse the rest of this just so that it goes a little bit faster for you guys. And then when we get into actually putting the stickers on, um, you, I'll slow it down and we'll, we'll actually answer some questions for you. Alright, so we are going to start, now that I've got all my stickers cut, um, I'm going to grab out the stickers that I know I'm going to be using, and we'll get started with that, and then while I am putting these stickers on, um, we'll get to your questions, all your guys' questions. Let's see, I need these two. I may just do these this part offline or off, you know, not in a video 
just because that is time consuming and I don't want to make it too long for you guys, you know, you know what I mean? Um, but I do have my hubby here. Of course, I film in my room, so he's here. <laughs> he's been listening to me the whole time, which is... To be fair, kind of awkward filming in front of your hubby. I don't know if any of you guys are um, YouTubers, if you feel awkward uh, at all doing these kind of videos with somebody watching. And for me, it just totally is. <laughs> but anyway, so I do want to get to your guys' questions. And this is the part where I will have the hubby join in on answering or at least putting some input in on you know that kind of stuff so i'm here and ready to answer all your questions <laughs> all right so that's my hubby hi everyone that's hubby hello um i'm gonna just go in the order that you guys posted them on that community post that way you know nobody gets missed hopefully so, the first question that we have is, what happened to your husband? <laughs> and that is from San Santa Solomon. Um, I think I just explained all of that, so we don't really need to go into it. But basically, he got cancer, or we found out he had cancer, and he had surgery to have that cancer removed. So, that's it in a nutshell on that. Kind of answered that in a long winded way at the beginning of this video um and the other one that she asked is are you all right i'll yeah. let you answer this yeah i'm I doing great go. thankfully um had a great surgeon great team that took care of me at the hospital um they've done follow-ups i've heard from the hospital several times just in general follow-ups making sure i'm doing well um, pain management has not been an issue. Um, thankfully, I haven't had any real pain medicine probably for seven days now. Um, and so I'm very, very grateful for that. So, yeah, I'm doing great. You're doing good. And it doesn't help. Oh, excuse me. It doesn't hurt that I have such a great caretaker. Oh, he's so sweet. <laughs> All right, look, don't make me blush during this video. <laughs> well, you right. said, you said, I can't mess up your Yelp reviews. Yes. So I have he, to behave. And I think, what day what was told. that? Day two? No, you threatened me every day this week. <laughs> <laughs> On day two, this man got himself up and went to the restroom by himself. And I was strictly told very limited and also I need to be with him at least the first day or two so the fact that he had done it by himself I was like you are going to give me a bad Yelp review <laughs> as a caretaker stop it so but oh, all in all he has been a good patient I would say all right, so the next question is from Sandy Melton. Actually, it's not a question. She said, no question here. Just glad he is home and the healing can start. You and me both. <laughs> the next one is from Faye Jacobs. She said, glad he is home. How long for recovery? Will this affect your income? His recovery, I have no idea. All I know is that it's been almost two weeks almost we were just a few we're no nah, it's not been two Wednesday weeks. Will be it's two just weeks. it's just over a week ago actually yeah. so just over a week ago and he's got he's definitely he can't put weight on his leg or anything he's tried to put his foot down a little bit and he he can tell like nope nope not yet and so he's definitely got a bit of a road ahead of him i would say um, not entirely sure how long, but I'm expecting at least a couple more weeks. Like, not necessarily that he's not going to be able to get up and go or even work, but just, like, to be fully recovered to where he feels more normal than not. I'm expecting at least a couple more weeks. Um, 
and probably I would say another week or so of not being in work. What do you think? I think it'll be longer, honestly. Yeah. 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 So he's already missed a week of work. Um, and he likely has one, maybe two more weeks um, or, or longer, but I work for an incredible company. They have been nothing but supportive and I can't say enough uh, about the company I work for and how grateful I am uh, to be a part of the company. I've heard from upper management um, already um, just checking on me to make sure I'm doing well. And they just tell me to get better and don't rush back. So Yeah, it's been really, it's, it's a blessing to have a company that holds your care. Um, above their business um and and we've noticed that since he got this job honestly they've been that way all the time family first if something came up and you needed to be there for your family no questions asked go um without any repercussions or anything like that we got you covered so when this came up they were like you know you do what you need to do take care of yourself take as long as you need to and luckily he is on salary so he gets paid no matter what and it was the same way with COVID when COVID happened and we were all at home for I don't even know like months months and months um he still he still got paid um because of the salary he's you know got that type of a contract with them so it's not going to affect our income too much. It probably will affect um, our modus paycheck because that is primarily based on like his travel miles and he's not traveling. So. And the only other real thing that will affect will be my side hustle that I do um, with my basket sales yeah. because, um, I mean, it's not that labor intensive, but I do have to cut all the wood and then make the baskets and then put them together and decorate them. And I mean, it's not something I can do while sitting down. It's very, you know, mm -hmm. hands on type of work. So I mean, we'll he see was, how it goes. We, we did have about a week before the surgery, like knowing that we're having a surgery. Um, so he did have a week to get some of that stuff done and ready so that while he's sitting here recovering, he could make baskets, but nobody expected that his groin incision would be so large because obviously we weren't, we weren't prepared for a whole skin graft. We thought it was just going to be a small incision. So it's not something that he can just sit straight up for a long period of time. So it's not been easy to get back in the ropes of making baskets right now, but maybe eventually. All right, let's move on to the next question. Glad the surgery went well. How are your kids handling it, and are they okay? Our kids are handling it pretty well. Yeah, Our son was just like, yeah, okay. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that has to do with his Asperger's or just being a guy. Maybe both. Probably both. <laughs> My daughters are... A lot more attentive, a lot sweeter, of course. A lot like their mom. Mm -hmm. um, Emotional. Yeah, but they they are like their mother in that they keep their emotions close to the vest. And it's hard for me personally to read, but she can see it. Yeah. And they have a close relationship anyway. Mm -hmm. And then um, I know that they've spoken to their counselor about it and... That's just been a real big help in general, but I think in this situation also it's been a big help for for them. That's very true. I mean, we already have them in counseling or therapy um, every other week for each of them. So they already have, you know, somebody that is professional there to help them cope with things. And I know for a fact they both have talked to her about, you know, the situation, and I'm sure that she's given them some good coping strategies on how to deal with the thoughts that may come from that because I think 
at least I know with my youngest, she deals with a lot of intrusive thoughts. Um, so I'm very thankful that we have already had them in therapy to begin with so that they have somebody to talk to about that if they need to. But I would say, like, when we sat them down to tell them um, what is happening, they took it rather well. Again, close to the vest, but you can tell they were worried and concerned. But we did um, we did give them the best case scenario. No lie. We, we gave mm -hmm. them the best case scenario. We caught it early, blah, 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 so that they didn't have to needlessly worry about something without Andy. just cause to you. We also kept them informed the whole way. Yeah. We didn't keep anything from them, so they knew what we knew. Mm hmm um, Because we didn't want them to worry and to think, you know. Yeah. Things that weren't going to happen. So, yeah. And that's the thing is, like, with us, we're just really big on communication. We always have been. Um, so... It's just if there's questions that need, you know, answers to, um, they come to us and they'll ask. So they know that if they need to talk, if they have questions that, that are concerns, that they can always come to us and ask and get those questions answered without, you know, letting your mind take over and do the thing that the mind does of, you know, you can really psych yourself out if you let it. But um, I will set up this calendar on my own. I don't want to take up too, too much time doing frivolous things. But basically what I do here is I put all the bills on the dates that they're due. I put any appointments that we have on here. I put the videos that I plan to make, very similar to this. Um, ordering groceries, that type of thing. Anything I need at a glance, I put on here. So I'll do that off camera um, and we'll just move on to the next page but all in all our kids are doing okay I think so and especially now that you know they have um, heard the good news that he is cancer free we're good okay so the next question was that question by the way was from Alil I think but the next question is Jesse Jesse F A W. I'm glad that he is doing well. Will he be off of work long? Do you have to make major adjustments to your budget by him being off of work? Or was he lucky enough to have sick leave to help cover? I'm always curious how time off works for different companies. So I think we pretty much answered that question. Yeah. He has basically been told take as long as you need to. Um, there is no time limit. They didn't say, we want you back in two weeks, or you need to be back. Nothing like that. It's basically, you recover, and when you're ready, you can come back. And again, it doesn't take a hit to his paycheck because he is salary. Thank the Lord for that. So it's not going to affect us in that way. Um, we will probably have to make adjustments to our budget anyway, um, because... The surgery is expensive and that means more medical bills are going to be coming our way um, in addition to possibly the modus paycheck being substantially smaller so we're definitely gonna have to make some adjustments here and there um, but nothing too major thankfully you want to add anything to that no I trust uh, the person taking care of our Bills and finances, she's done pretty good so far. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, let's move to the next one. This is from, uh, I'm probably going to say some of these names so wrong, but Aserano. Glad to hear your hubby is home and recovering. That's not a question, but thank you so, so much for the comment because I'm also glad that he's home and recovering as well. This one had a second, somebody seconded this question. This is from Brittany Rayner. I really want to know how you two met. Really random, but I absolutely love hearing YouTubers' stories. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So do you want 
to tell you my version or your version. Well, you can start with your version while I, I work on this page. So my parents at the time were pastors. And um, we were building a small church. Um, not very large, maybe 50 people. So it wasn't a large church. And it was on a Saturday and my father and I were working. And um, it's when I first noticed my wife. Uh, I was on a ladder and my dad was, we were up high and I was like, wow, she's cute. And my dad was like, yeah, that's such and such his daughter. You know, you should go say hey. So that's kind of where it all started for the most part. <laughs> and then, you know, I uh, made a poor attempt of asking her out on a date, you know, no game whatsoever. So, and then uh, we went to an, a, a huge amusement park near our home and, you know, just kind of went on from there and been together ever since. <laughs> So little did he know, I had already been going to that church for like at least a month. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely already noticed him. Um, in fact, I, we, we weren't really church goer, church goers, um, for me growing up. Um, I don't know. Our, my parents didn't really, we did, we dabbled, if you will, in various different churches, but nothing ever like full time, long term. And so my mom had asked me if I wanted to go to church with her. Um, she had been attending this church down the road and she liked it and she kind of wanted some of her family to kind of go with her. At this time, I'm, I think I was like 15. Yeah, I was just a couple of months shy of my 16th birthday. And so I was like, no, because <laughs> who wants to get up early? No, nah, I'm good. But then she convinced me by telling me that there was a really cute boy there. <laughs> and it just happened to be my hubby. So I was like, okay, fine. Like, I don't know. I wasn't like a boy crazy type of person, but I don't know. For some reason, that just made me get up and go. So I joined my mom. It was just me and her. And we went, and it just happened to be um, his parents' anniversary. Or not anniversary. It was a birthday, I think. I think it was... Whose birthday is in February? My mom's. So it was your mom's birthday. And y'all were having some kind of um, banquet or something after the service. And so while we were in service, my mom pointed this boy out and said there he is he's cute isn't he I'm like yeah he's actually kind of cute I mean not necessarily my type but you know what kind of type do I possibly have at that age I'm still learning my type as it is so I you know I'm like yeah he's he's kind of cute and so we decided to stay afterwards um so that we could you know partake of the food that they were serving for his mother's birthday and I remember, um, you know, looking at him, he walked in the kitchen. I was super excited, um, nervous. I got all the butterflies and nerves when he just walked in because there was a kitchen of the church that they had at the time, which was basically a house while they were building another, like the, the actual facility. So I was like, okay, so like he's the pastor's kid. Like mom didn't mention that part. <laughs> so um, I was like, all right, uh, okay. You know, I'm not sure. I wasn't sure about it. And I uh, just went about, we went home that day. And um, it was either that night or a night very soon, like in that week in between church days. Um, I had actually had a dream that I married him and I don't know, it changed my perspective about him. Like I thought he was cute, but I just didn't think, you know, I didn't know that there was any chance, if you will, but it changed my perspective about him 
in that moment. And then suddenly I was enamored. <laughs> And I, I couldn't wait to go to church the next time. And I couldn't wait to see him and sneak peeks at him and hopefully get some eye contact. And I will never forget the first time we had eye contact, but apparently you did. <laughs> because if you only remember me from when we were building the church, yeah, I'd already been there for a while. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. I'm just... <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just was enamored with him. And... Um, Honestly, at the time, you were dating someone, and that's yeah, probably why somebody, you didn't yeah. notice me right. until that. Because, you know, you were you were dating someone, and naturally you shouldn't be looking at other people while you're with somebody else. Okay. So um, I was just like, I knew that he was dating someone. I found out all the deets, you know, like a girl would do anyway. So I knew that, but I just could not shake the feeling that this man is the one for me. And so I really learned, I learned a lot about faith and trust and waiting and just, um, just trusting, trusting God. And that was really like my first experience with, you know, a religion of some sort was over a boy, go figure. God knew how to get to me. <laughs> But that's how we met, was through our church. It became my church. And then eventually he noticed me. Um, I had my parents and my grandparents, everybody praying that if this is the man that I was meant to be with, that it would be. And if it wasn't, to shut the door. Don't let there be any, like, change my mind. That's what I wanted. Like, if it was meant to be, then let it be. I'll be patient. I'll wait as long as it takes. But if it's not, please don't give me any hope. Like change my mind. I don't want to sit here and, and like chase a guy that is not meant to be mine. <laughs> and eventually he broke up with the girlfriend and uh, noticed me and the rest is history. We have been together ever since. And that was what, 20? 48, 50 years ago. 48, 50, I'm not even that old. <laughs> that was 20 25 isn't it no 6 97 is when we met 26 so 26 years ago wow yeah that's crazy so mm. that's how we met was through our church um, and we've been together ever since alright the next comment says, is from Jamie Leeper Many prayers for his recovery, health, and peace for you and the kiddos. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. um, next comment was from Brandy Lisa. I'm glad that he is home and taking the time to recover. Prayers still coming um, your guys' way for a good recovery. And how are you holding up? I'm holding up pretty good, I think. I mean, I'm tired. I'm not going to lie. This man is an early riser, and I am not. <laughs> and I'm used to waking up, and he's already gone for work. So I get to sleep in as long as I want. Well, that's not the case now, because this man is home, and he still wakes up at the crack butt of dawn. <laughs> at the devil's hour, I like to call it. And... <laughs> He will try in his best to be quiet. He sneaks out of the bed and wheels himself to the bathroom. Then he comes back in. He'll put some headphones in and watch, you know, something on his phone. But I'm telling you, every single morning I'm up at 8, if not before 8. So, Dude, I'm I dying. Would, I would not have said that if I were you. Why? <laughs> Everybody else is going to be shaking their head. That They're is, like me. Don't even. If you have a real 9 to 5, you're up early i'm telling you there's gonna be Jeez. some people that relate <laughs> mm, mm, there's gonna mm. be people that relate i would to me. suggest a poll <laughs> who gets up at the normal time of five like a normal person. i have no shame i am not and a morning person <laughs> i'm a stay-at-home mom i get to sleep in like that's just how it is so <laughs> it's just been a struggle for me um, 
But I'm you've exhausted. never been an early riser. Never. I've never been an early riser. No, never. Mm. I mean, when I've had a job, I have been. But well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But there's times that, you know, like, I, I'm a night owl. I stay up late. Like, that is, my brain does not shut off until the wee morning hours. The devil's hour. <laughs> <laughs> if I try to go to sleep when you go to sleep, I would be tossing and turning, honestly. So, I can't do it. But it's it's really taking mm. a toll on me in the sense that, you know, I go to bed 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm up at 8 or before 8. I'm exhausted, babe. Let me sleep. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He doesn't actually do anything to wake me up. I just sense his presence, I think, and I just wake up. It is what it is. We're coping. But what about you? Or How are you holding up over there? I'm getting antsy, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I know there's things that need to be done around the house, cutting the grass. You know, and then I've got work stuff, and then I want to make baskets. And then, you know, but I know if I... Do something stupid like my caregiver tells me not to do. Mm-hmm. Um, then it'll just put me back further, and I won't be able to take care of the things I need to do in a timely manner. Yeah. So um, I'm just playing by the rules, obeying, not really getting too out of hand. I've already got two strikes, <laughs> so we're on a strike system over here. Yeah, one more, and I don't want to know what happens. That's... Is what I've been told. <laughs> You don't want to know. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, he is getting antsy. I can see it. I know that he wants to get up. He wants to do things. He's he's just that type of person where he has to do things. Like, being idle is not his favorite thing in the world. So, I know that's been a, a struggle for you. And it's a struggle for me watching you struggle with it, to be honest. Because I know. I absolutely know. But... It's just, you know, it's the sacrifices we have to make right now. So, and you're right. It it's it's gonna it's gonna be worth it though in the end when you finally get to cut grass because whoo that grass is getting long. <laughs> <laughs> All that rain it's made it grow. All right, next question or comment is from Jacqueline Johnson. Is he going to have chemo or radiation or is he going to be put on medication or medicine? Can't remember its name. I'm an old person, sorry. Also, do you have cancer insurance like Aflac, um, where it helps family that has a family member that got cancer? Check your health insurance. What is your max out of pocket? Because your insurance has uh, screwed people on that part. If you get your max out of pocket, they have to pay 100%. I learned this part years ago, about 100 years ago. <laughs> When she had breast cancer twice. Wow. Wow. No, we don't have Aflac. I don't even know. Could you get that after the fact, though? I'm not sure. Um, all I know is that we have very good insurance, thankfully, uh, through our company, my company. And um, we've already met our deductible, out-of-pocket deductible, so... In theory, everything should be taken care of. In theory, but it's not. No. But I, mean, I will say this, just just to ease some curiosity. The actual surgery um, was estimated to be around $40,000. And after insurance, our portion was only, what, twelve or 1300 12. Yeah. So... That's good. However, we are getting other bills, like the lab bills and things like that, that for some reason the insurance is not touching. Like there's one specific bill that's already come in that was $8,500. And it says, on it's not a bill, it's actually it's the, the explanation of benefits thing. And it says at the bottom, like they won't cover experimental or something I don't procedures and I'm like what is experimental about checking to see if there's cancer cells in in a lab I'm not entirely sure 
what that's about. So we do have to call them on that because they're not touching it. They're not, they're not even paying that. So it may be on us. I don't know, depending on whatever they tell us, but we do need to call that. But there's going to be other bills that come in besides just the hospital bills. So, and they'll get paid eventually. I mean, even if we're paying $25 a month, every month for years, um, they'll get paid eventually. So I don't know, but we do not have Aflac. I haven't even looked into it. I'm not in, I'm not entirely sure you can get it after like with a pre-existing condition. I'm not entirely sure, but maybe they do. Maybe that's the point of it is to get it when you have hard times. I'm not sure. But as far as the chemo and radiation, no, like he's completely cancer free. doesn't have to have any follow up. Uh, treatment or anything just to follow up with the uh, dermatologist every three months yeah just to make sure some clear you know checks and then it'll be every six months for the yeah now on so he he has to you know keep up with it make sure like he'll he'll go in um to the dermatologist every three months like he said um just to get an overall skin check make sure no other places are popping up or anything like that um but overall like he's pretty much done other than just maintenance so that's that's awesome to even think about it's not as scary um as it was when we first found out in regards to that which i'm very very grateful and blessed because i realize that that is not always the case um when it comes to cancer so all right, let's move to the next one. This is from Confidently Brown. Thank God he is home and can heal. How are you and the kids feeling and doing? Will you have help from family for your husband's healing process? Well, like I said, we're doing pretty good. We're, we're maintaining. Um, as far as help, no. And it's not necessarily that they wouldn't help. If we asked, I know that they would in a heartbeat. Um, it's just that we don't need it. We've got it. <laughs> We're very independent family over here. We've got it. But if we did need help, we I know 100% we could always call and ask. Yeah. And they'd be there in a heartbeat. We have great friends and yes. neighbors and family. <clears throat> and we did already have um, some friends of ours bring food, which was so nice. And it was great, too. Yeah, it was really good. It lasted quite a few meals, actually, so... That was nice too. Made it real easy for me since I'm like kind of carrying the burden of all of that while he recovers. So that was really, really kind. I'm sure she's, she might be watching this now. So thank you. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next up we have, this is Madison. Um, that is actually cowgirl and cowboy. You remember yeah, them? I've read a bunch of their stuff before. Yeah, so they, I guess they got a new channel. Or, yeah. It says, hi there, it's Cowgirl. We, here we have a dilemma. Our AC stopped working. It's 21 years old. We have the money to buy another one, but know the best time is in the fall when it's a bit cheaper. What do you think this retired couple should do? <laughs> well, depending on where you live, I know here where we're at, it is uh, humid and hot, Mary. and the lack of AC just wouldn't cut it. Mm -mm. Um, me personally, I would get the AC, but again, you know, it just depends on uh, your climate area. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that because um, we did have a situation where our AC went out once um, mm. in the dead of summer awful it was like a sauna in this house it almost held the heat more than outside we would go outside in the 90 something degree weather to cool off it was just so hot um and we immediately got it done like there was no waiting we couldn't there was no waiting so i i think i agree with what he's saying it depends on your climate if it's not hot and you can stand to wait then stand to wait if it's hot, girl, get you some AC. <laughs> Don't wait. That's awful. If you can, anyway. The next one is from Stacy Hill. Glad his surgery is over now. On to the next steps. 
I went through cancer and all the fun stuff that comes with it. That's in quotation marks, fun. <laughs> um, twice with my late hubby. Uh-huh. All I can say as a caregiver is remember to breathe. It can all be overwhelming. Take notes, ask questions, and if you have to ever Google something, go to a reputable site um, and advocate for your loved one and yourself. Thankfully, we always seem to get great staff wherever we went for treatment. I will say they were very nice. Yeah, they were fantastic. From the uh, gentleman who valeted our car to, you know, the front desk people, they were very oh, yeah. helpful. It's It was a very large facility, so getting turned around was very easy, and people would go out of their way to help us make sure I got where I needed to be. Yeah. Um, but truth be told... Um, because we are a family of faith, we have um, <clears throat> really seen God's hand move um, in a big way in this situation. Um, and um, then just looking back at the situations that my wife and I have been in, um, since we've been married, good, bad, and different, um, it's easy to see how God has, um, ordered our steps. And, yeah. um, I'm very thankful for that. Um, it's awesome to see God's love, um, for us firsthand. Yeah. That is something that we talked about. Was it coming home from there? Coming home from your surgery? Dude, I don't remember anything. <laughs> I was so <laughs> high on life. I don't really remember. I feel like we anything. were going south, so... We were going somewhere. Uh, and there was that realization moment where it was like, wow, if you'd have gotten that job that you wanted to get, or if you'd have done this or that, likely by this moment, our insurance wouldn't have kicked in yet. Or... You yeah. know, there's so many different, like you're in a brand new job and now you're taking so many time, so much time off, like they, it might not look good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't know like their policy in regards to you taking time off for yeah. medical leave and all that. So it was really clear that our steps were ordained. They were intentionally done away. And at the time, like... It was very easy to question why, like, why couldn't I, why couldn't this happen? This would have been so much better for our family if this and this and this would have happened. Why? Like, why? Well, now we know why. And you don't always get that kind of clarity Mm -hmm. in life. You don't. You don't always get to see that hindsight. Um, But this time we did. And it was very eye-opening. Very cool. And it, it it's a freedom that you get from just knowing that you don't have to be always in control. Because regardless, we're going to be okay. Regardless. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. All right, so let's go to the next one. This is from Sydney Smith. I see you comment all the time. I appreciate it. I'm so happy for your hubby, your husband that he's home and recovered enough for you to film a Q&A. How fun. I'm probably too late, but I agreed with this with some other people and would love to know how you met, how long hubby is off for, and if he is getting any sick time so you don't take a big financial hit. I will keep watching your videos and all the ads to help make sure you make some (laughs) extra money. Thank you (laughs) for that. Um, I feel like we pretty much answered this, but I do want to add in there that the struggle is real with filming, guys. It really is. And Hubby can attest, I have struggled starting this video, like, big time. Which is so not like me. No, you love doing these videos and talking to your friends uh, online here. And but I think just with so much going on and 
taking care of me, taking care of the house and getting our daughter back and forth to work. I mean, it's been a lot. And, uh, you, you know, it rightly has, so, yeah. but at the same time, like there, it's not like I'm going nonstop. There's been moments where I could have easily, but for some reason, oh, the struggle has been so real to start this video. But now that I'm in it, I'm glad that I am. <laughs> I'm glad that I am. But I don't know. I think just, I just needed time. I think is what it is. I just needed some time. But with that being said, I do appreciate everybody who is still watching those videos, um, watching all the ads and stuff, and, and helping me generate some income. I really, really appreciate that. All right, so the next one, Colleen T, or Colleen, T, I'm not sure. Um, no questions, but was just thinking about you today for some reason, and boom, this popped up in my YouTube feed. Hope you guys are doing okay. Take all the time you need. We'll be here. Thank you. That's so sweet. I appreciate that. Um, this one is from Kiki, sending prayers and blessings for a speedy recovery. Hope you're doing good, um, or hope you're good during this as well. Much love. Oh, thank you. And this one is from Gina, Gina Moffitt, maybe? Um, what can we as a community do to support you guys right now? I identify with you so much and feel you are a kindred spirit and would like to support your journey. I even join YouTube Premium so I can support the community of great people like you. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, support is just watching the videos, I guess. Just being a part of this journey with me. That to me is support. It's knowing I'm not alone. That there are people that care, even people that don't even really know me, don't even know what I look like, <laughs> don't even know my first name, and and yet you care. And when you have people like that, that care genuinely, and you can tell in your comments that yeah. people care, <clears throat> um, you become more than a sub, you become a part of our family. I know, and it's so and cliche to that's hear the way it, but we it's look so at it true. As your family, and uh, we deeply appreciate it. It meant the world to me personally to read the comments that you guys left. I haven't even told her that I've read all the comments that you guys have left on the videos where she talked about this situation and to see the, you know, good thoughts and prayers and wishes and blessings and all. It's uh. It's different. I'm not used to that. Um, you're you're supposed to have that from your family and friends, but people you don't know to say, "Hey, I'm praying for your husband, and we hope he does well." That that really just ministered to my heart. So, from over here on this side of the room, I really appreciate it. Um, it genuinely meant the world to me, and to know that you care enough about my wife to. Um, care for her and and think about her and and still watch her her uh content even when she's not making it um it means a lot to me personally so thank you from this side of the room i love you babe <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that's that just that is support in itself that's and that's all i could ever ask for it's just that so I do appreciate it. It just makes me feel like I have a tribe here. All right, next one. Um, this was from Georgie K. Praying for a rapid recovery. Thank you, Georgie. Um, this is from Adrian Collins. My goodness, just sending prayers to him and your family. I missed all that has been going on, but praying that it's uphill from here. Thank you, Adrian. Jillian Brown says, no questions, just wanted you to know my heart was breaking for you during your sinking funds video. I'm glad surgery is over and I'm continue, continuing to pray for a speedy recovery and that they got all the cancer. Well, thank you for your prayers because they did. <laughs> this is from Budget Like a Girl. Glad he's home and resting. I hope this isn't too personal. From our point of view, you two seem to have a pretty good agreement on how money should be saved slash spent is there ever disagreements do you two have a system that helps in overcoming those disagreements over money yeah we've question. got a system 
I'll ask, and she says no. It's pretty much that simple. <laughs> You're going to make me sound really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Usually, it's because I want something stupid, or granted, I spend all the money that I have in my wood fund, and I need more wood, and you're like, no, we can't do it right now. You'll have to wait. So, and then I'm like, yeah, you're right. That's pretty much it. Or can we get some chicken wings or stuff like that? Yeah, that that is true. Um, As far as disagreements, though, I don't think that we've ever fought over money. No, no. And, and. To be honest, she and I remember in my prior position how hard it was to raise three children, growing children, and bills and bills and bills growing just as much and how thin things got. So we never lost that taste of being thin with money and... um we don't want to go back there. Mm -mm. So we fight and scratch to make sure we don't. And if, you know, it means one of us or both of us don't get to do X, Y, Z, then that's just how it is. And, um, so again, I'm thankful for the company that I work with and, um, just it's a phenomenal company is all I can say. Um, but we just don't want to go back to where we came from, yeah. really, is what it is. And, um, and we got to do whatever it takes. Yeah. So So we're kind of just like on, the, on board at the same time. Um, if we had agreements, though, I'm not sure. I, how would we handle it? Like, if we had disagreements about how to save or spend certain money. Well, you know, I don't know. We, <laughs> we, 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 we've made it a point in our marriage um, a long, long time ago not to argue. Yeah. And to uh, work things out. And I think, I really believe that that's helped us out in a lot of other areas, not only personally but financially and um just every facet we're just not going to argue about it yeah and it's not necessarily about getting my way or she getting her way it's about doing what's best for the family and we've got three children that we have to be responsible for and we put their needs before our needs and um as long as my children are taken care of i'm fine yeah. So that's that's kind of how we play ball, really. It's it's a lot of just putting your pride aside. Yeah, it's give and take. Yeah, but like, it, I think that, I think that, um, no matter what, we always seem to just agree on it because I know that your intentions are good for our family. You you have our family's best interest at heart. You know my intentions are the right. same. So we trust each other. So when one of us is like, I want to try this method of saving or this mm-hmm. this and that, um, we kind of just trust each other. I'm like, okay, well, let's give it a shot. And yeah. we, we back each other that way. And it's very much the same with this, this premise when I... When I saw a video on YouTube just randomly in my feed, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> and I ended up watching the entire video, and I'm like, I want this. <laughs> because though we weren't, like, struggling, we weren't doing, we weren't thriving. We weren't thriving, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if this could change things, if this could be a game changer, I'm willing to try it. No doubt. And so... He, of course, is like, he's like that with everything. Any kind of goal or venture I set for myself or our family, he's usually on board. Always. Just like, well, I'm willing to try anything. We'll we'll try whatever. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, well, we can say we tried. And that's just kind of how we operate a little bit. But, um, as if, if we had disagreements, I feel like it would 
definitely kind of make things hard, harder. Um, yeah. But I think we're definitely equally yoked in the sense that we both have the same common goals. And if, if both of our goals is the betterment of, of ourselves and our family, then it's going to align. Yeah, it's, it's hard to move forward when you're pulling in two separate directions. Yeah. All right, so next one was Tanya Hudson. Was you and Hubby both on board when you started this journey, or was it something that you had to prove that it worked? I've been doing budgeting and cash stuffings since the first of the year and only have the hubby halfway on board. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, I don't think there was really any convincing per se. It was just, truth be told, our finances were horrible. And so any way we could get out, that's how I wanted to do it. It would not have mattered one bit. But plus, I trust her Mm -hmm. um, with everything. And, um, you know, so she's seen it and she did her research and I trusted her and I was like, all right, well, let's do it. I'm behind you a hundred percent. So, you know, and you know, to be honest, there's only so much research you can do and where you have to put the research aside and practice it and see if it works. And, um, I, just as much as he, wasn't even sure that this this could work. So it wasn't necessarily me wanting to prove to him that it could because I, I didn't know that it could. I wanted to prove to myself that maybe it could because yeah. if it did, then that's beneficial for us. If it didn't, then, you know, okay, well, live, you live, you learn. Um, so it wasn't necessarily that I had to prove to him that it worked. It was like, let's just try this out and see what happens. What's the worst that could happen? We save some extra dollars, you know, like genuinely. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, that's funny because I kind of just answered that is that, you know, he's always on board with everything I do. Like literally I could I've joined so many gyms thinking that that's what I wanted to do in life (laughs) to not go, but he's been on board every single time, (laughs) every diet that I wanted to try. He's on. I do stupid things (laughs) all the time and you're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Because you know, a, it's probably not going to (laughs) work or if it does work, it'll be fine. Like these baskets have been a life saver for us on a lot of occasions. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's very true because, you know, we have hobbies and things and um, some of that is you have to put money into it. um, And that's kind of what this the basket thing was initially was just to make a little bit of extra money. Um, It never was intended to be anything more than just making a little bit of extra money. Yeah. But it actually has brought or generated some mega income sometimes at certain festivals, which is amazing and very helpful. So had I been, yeah, had I been the person that was like, no, (laughs) you can't, you can't try out your hobby, then we would have missed out. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of our philosophy. I mean, if it's not going to hurt to try it, then let's try it. Mm -hmm. And if it, if it didn't work out, then at least we tried Next one. These are really long answers. Well, I have a lot of pages to do, so. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) All right, Lynette uh, McKay. Okay, the thing is, let me start by saying I am so happy that your husband is doing well in his recovery. I am also looking for some small business business to support cash budget system. I'm also trying to run homemade beaded jewelry on etsy oh that's so cool her shop name is handmade wobby w-o-b-y lynette l-y-n-n-e-t-t-e a huge shout out to you i have huge respect for you guys who are trying to start your small businesses to generate income for yourself or your families um 
I will shout you guys out every single day. No doubt. I wish I could do that. <laughs> I wish I had something like a, a niche that would take off and do that myself. So, like, I am I I cannot support you guys enough. To be honest, I would shout you guys to the moon and back because of um, you're doing the things and. You just can't hate on that, you know? So, yes, advertise yourself, dear. We got you. (laughs) All right, Jennifer Garcia. This is actually the last one, so I guess I can time-lapse the rest of this video after this. Um, As a subbie that has watched all of your videos, I just want to say that I am very proud of you and your family. You guys and your budget have been through a lot and have thrived through it all. You're incredibly strong, and I must say you and your husband are a power couple running a house full of kids and lots of pets. (laughs) How's your daughter's budget now that she has a job? She's a baller right now. I know. Proud. I cannot, I cannot describe to you how proud we are. Yeah, I'm so, so psyched for her. She works hard. She does. She works hard for her money and I'm proud of her. And she's saved quite a bit. She has. So, um, I'm thankful for the example that she sees in my wife. Um, She's going to be set up for her future um, better than we were at, at, um, you know, so her age, yeah, at her age, yeah, man. Um, So I'm, I'm just excited for her, and so so proud of her. And she's already seeing the benefits of it. So with her job, she gets paid once a month, which is kind of strange, but it is doable it's not like something that it can't be done and i'm kind of helping guide her on how to make a once a month paycheck stretch over a month and and it's not like she has bills and things like that that she has to take care of so that helps too let's just be real um but she is putting money in savings she's um saving for things in fact she um saved up already to buy the brand new switch OLED I think is what it's called don't roast me in the comments please (laughs) it's the switch OLED I think is what it's called she saved up to buy that outright and she has been using her um, her cash stuffing book that I made her and like we had a conversation the other day we were talking about how if she had not done this process that first paycheck that she cash stuffed with you guys on video um would have already been gone but she still has hundreds of dollars sitting in those in those envelopes and has been adding to it um with each paycheck so that's huge and she's already seeing the benefit already like so if she's seeing that now and we keep reinforcing with her like imagine if you're seeing this now and you're seeing that you have all this money saved for things for savings for your future imagine where you will be in 20 years and this is just from a couple paychecks you know imagine 20 years of paychecks where you could be right now and and that that alone right there is enough to make her realize the benefit of continuing on with the system and she's doing so so good like i can't i can't even describe how well she's doing with that i'm proud of her so she's doing really good (laughs) um She's, she's putting in that work. She's tired, I know, but she is doing it, and I'm proud of her. So that is it for all of the questions that you guys had. I, again, appreciate everyone who put questions in and, you know, just was curious about the things that we're going through or just our life in general. There were some really good questions, and um, I appreciate it. Do you want to say anything before you end your segment here, babe? Um, I just wanted to reiterate my thanks uh, again for uh, just the prayers and the thoughts for my wife and my children. Uh, That means a lot when um, 
people care enough to care about your family. Um, going through this, I really didn't think that it would bother my children as much as it possibly did. Or, you know, again, they're closer to their mom. Not closer, but they talk to her more than they do to me about really deep things and that's fine um but to know that people care about them and their well-being um it's uh it, it means a lot um and so thank you from the bottom of my heart <clears throat> i'm doing great i'm very thankful very blessed god is healed healing my body and uh, i'm just so thankful so so thankful for for this whole situation i know it sounds weird to be thankful for cancer but it's given me a new perspective on things and um just a, a better a real gratitude for uh the things that i have um not meaning monetary things or um toys or whatever but just my life and my family and um just seeing how God's taking care of us I'm I have a better appreciation a, a, a better or more thankfulness so thank you guys from again from the bottom of my heart I really appreciate it and with that I think that um I will just end the video here I haven't finished. I still have my whole WTF Wednesday book to do, but I think that I'm going to do that off camera on my own time when I have the time. And um, if you guys are curious on how I make that work, I do have other videos with setting up my budget books. So if you're ever curious, you can always go back and reference those for um, how I get that accomplished. Um, but for me, I think that I'm just going to call it a day on this video. I'm sure it's long enough and um, finish the rest off camera. But I do want to say that I appreciate everyone's comments. Everyone who has just been thinking about us, um, it, it just makes it makes it easier. It honestly makes it a lot easier to know that there are people out there who who care. So thank you guys for caring. And I will see you guys in the next video. I cannot tell you what video that's going to be. I have so much to make up. I have a cash stuffing that needs to be done. I have some WTF Wednesdays, which I might just like combine that all into one. Um, yeah, we've got some makeup work to do. But just be looking out for it. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And hit that notification bell. So... <laughs> So that you um, are notified whenever I post. So that you don't miss it whenever it drops. So I'll see you in the next one. Whatever that will be. And whenever that will be. And as always guys. Until next time. Bye.